Mystery time. Okay. What in the world happened to Caring First Assembly of God Church in St. Joseph, Missouri? Okay, a little bit of history. I attended Caring First Assembly of God. Uh, let's see, I left St. Joe in 90, late 94, you're somewhere, summer of night, spring of 94. Okay, well, I attended there from probably 90, maybe 90, 91 to 92, 93. I was there for, I can't remember really how long I was there. I left there before I left St. Joe. Um, Caring First Assembly of God was a very big church. It was a mega church for the time. I mean, it uh, obviously didn't have the magnificent population of like uh, Rick Warren, you know, his lost congregation or anything. But uh, it was a very big church, you know, considered a mega church in St. Joe at that time. Now, uh, my time there was, uh, I have I got a lot of fond memories from there. You know, I, I did a lot of good stuff. I got involved in ministry. Um, but there were some problems, and uh, the fact that the church, a church that big, generally when churches split up, there are generally uh, a remnant of the church, and they kind of maybe go somewhere and uh, start up under a new name or something. Um, uh, they vanish. They're they're like they're like the uh, you know they're like the the colony of Roanoke at this point. You know they they just disappeared now. Uh, the former lead pastor, Steve Poe, he left the church somewhere around the latter 90s. Um, the other pastors, uh, I do know that I, I saw something. There were there were three pastors. Well, I think there were four. Uh, the fourth one was like a senior's pastor, and I really didn't know him very well. But it was Pastor Steve Poe was the main pastor. Uh, there was Pastor uh, Brett was the singles pastor. I don't forgot Brett's last name, but then the youth pastor, which was the one I probably knew the best, was Pastor Kent Linaway, and he was a former rock guitarist in a band. You know, I kind of thought he was cool because of that, but he was a really good guy. Um, all the pastors I really liked. Um, now, it, you know, as far as you know, pastors, you know, pastors leaving the church. That's the pastors leave the church and get transferred all the time. But I don't know, there's something just in my spirit, you know, saying that there's something more there because, I mean, the church just is gone, you know. Uh, now, I do know this. Uh, let me give take you back a little bit to my history. Uh, I had uh, in 19, late 19, well, it was halfway through, probably July of 1989, I I had been living in Wichita, Kansas. My parents moved back to Cameron, Missouri, which was a kind of our base town back, you know, in the early to sort of mid eighties. We moved to Fort Scott, Kansas. Anyway, um, when I got back uh, in Wichita, let me only tell you this: a uh, Wichita, I had a tremendously active social life. I mean, I was just. I dated so many different girls when I was in Wichita. I mean, it was just so many. Uh, I had them coming up to me asking for my phone number. So it was really weird, you know. And uh, I really didn't ask too many people out. They asked me out. I had a really good uh, social life going. Well, my parents, I was only 18. My parents moved back to uh, Missouri. And I was, at the time, kind of financially incapable of supporting myself. Uh, I had some friends that said, oh, hey, move in with us. But... They kind of their lifestyles and mine were just not really this, you know, too compatible. Um, at least living together, you know. And um, so I chose to go back to Missouri and stay with my parents until I could get, you know, some uh, bearings and some direction in my life. Well, okay. Uh, when I moved back to Missouri, my social life completely dried up. I mean, it was just like uh, not many friends, not no girlfriends at all. And so, you know, I, I hadn't had to ask really anybody out. So uh, what I did was I thought, okay, uh, you know, there's a really kind of a cute girl at work. You know, I worked at a local grocery store, and um, it was a night stockman. 
And I went up on tour, tour one day and I said, Hey, you know, would you like to hang out sometime? And, uh, you know, maybe go someplace, get something to eat. And she's like, positively, no, how would you ever even think about that? You know, and I was just like, Whoa, hold on, you know, you know, um, so anyway, but I found, you know, the more I asked more people, the answer was just no, 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 no. And this is kind of odd for a person who, you know, didn't even have to ask anybody. I just, and really not much had changed about me. I mean, it was maybe three or four months removed from, you know, being in uh, my former state out in Wichita, Kansas, where I had friends all over the place and just active social life and everything was going great. Well, uh, after a while, I did notice in my life that when I had a girlfriend, my life seemed to kind of take a more even, you know, it wasn't just all about me. You know, I was just, wasn't just thinking about me all the time. I was thinking about somebody else. Uh, and my life kind of sort of, sort of evened out and got more on an even keel. So, uh, I was kind of, you know, like <laughs> this isn't happening here, you know, and my grandmother, uh, God rest her soul at the time, she said, well, there's this big church down in St. Joseph, and it's a big mega church, and they have all these programs. They have a singles program, uh, and uh, they have all these things. Why don't you go down there? So I did. I went down there. Uh, I went to a church service, and I found out you know, things about the, the, the church, and there was a college and career class. And so, um, honestly, at this point, if I could go back and tell myself, Give myself some advice. I would say, listen, just don't go there. Um, uh, now, I will say that Pastor Steve, all the pastors were great people. In fact, now, you know, in my devotionals and things like that, I will sort of, in my own mind, refer to some of Pastor Steve's sermons that he gave. He, he was a wonderful speaker and a very uh, uplifting person and a powerful speaker. Uh, but the problem in uh, caring first assembly of God was that people kind of had a running joke in St. Joe at the time. They called it caring last. Um, again, not the fault of the pastors, but you have to understand this was a very affluent church. Uh, you know, most people that went to the church were upper middle class. They drove nice cars. They lived in very nice houses. Uh, if, in the college and career class, uh, when I first walked in there, um, there were probably about close to six or seven really good looking girls and, uh, probably an equal number of, you know, decent guys. Uh, but let me tell you something, getting anywhere beyond, you know, two inches past, you know, your home plate with them, uh, you know, it's kind of like, show me the money, you know, what do you got? And, uh, as time went on, I really, you know, trying to get involved in ministry and uh, also having this hope that, you know, I could somehow connect with somebody and have some meaningful relationship within, you know, the guise of a Christian relationship just totally evaporated. And I got really kind of rebellious and mouthy and uh, I ended up burning some bridges and um, uh, it all kind of came to a head when uh, I was I was very close to my Sabbath school teacher, and she had daughters that went to the church, you know. And um, she she died of cancer shortly, not too long after, you know. I I left the church. Uh, she knew about it. Well, I or I, she she knew about it. You know, it was not a big surprise. She was fighting it while I was there. Um, anyway, uh, I went over to her house one day and just told her. I said, I, I just wanted to tell you so you don't wonder what happened to me. Because I was a pretty visible person. I was very outspoken. I, when I first got to, my lighting is really kind of goofed up here. Let me see. Here. There we go. Um, when I first got to the church, I was kind of a shy person. I really you know, was kind of just, you know, testing the waters. I really wasn't offering much of an opinion on anything. But as time went on, I got more opinionated. And when I started seeing stuff that kind of irritated and annoying me, like, you know, not practicing what you preach and stuff like that, I would call people out on it. And they didn't like that. Um, so anyway, uh, what, you know, eventually happened, I went over to this, this lady's house 
And uh, she was in the middle of cancer treatment. She wasn't feeling very good. But I just told her, I said, I want you to know that uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm not coming to your class anymore. And it has nothing to do with you, but it has to do with these other people. Uh, and they weren't all bad. Many of the guys were decent people. Uh, but uh, I said, I'm, I'm just not coming here anymore. I don't like the way that I'm treated. I, I think that... Um, People are very judgmental, and uh, there's really not a real Christ-like attitude going on in this class. And uh, she said there there was also a person there, and he was a, a boy that came um, probably in his early 20s or something. He was a quadriplegic. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't really develop much of a friendship with him either. But she said that he was, he was interestingly, not coming back either for the same reasons. So uh, this kind of caused a real rift. Uh, she kind of tied it in with her talk on, uh, you know, uh, her Sunday school. I mean, if I said Sabbath school, I'm an SDA person right now. Um, but it was Sunday school at the time. Um, and she tied it in with her Sunday school lesson. And it people really got mad and started basically a fight broke out. Not a fist fight, but a shouting match kind of broke out. Uh, there was some soul searching that went on because, you know, I mean, when you, you think you're really great and you're spiritual and somebody calls you out on it, it can be a rude awakening. And I mean, I'm probably, you know, some people probably may have been able to say the same thing about me. I'm not setting myself above these people or anything, but, uh, generally the whole attitude in the church was kind of cold, despite the fact that the pastor's best efforts to try to get the congregation on the right track. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe that eventually led to a disillusion of the church in some way, shape, or form. And I really wish, I mean, Pastor Steve now, he is, uh, he's the pastor of a mega church in Indiana. I mean, if I messaged him or anything like that, I might never hear from him. But uh, I was kind of hoping I could just get a hold of somebody that had some knowledge. I called uh, I called the uh, Riverside Baptist Church, which is the church that is in the building now, and the guy that I talked to, pastor that was there, he's only been there a few years, and he didn't know anything about it. Uh, he did know that, you know, it used to be a big church, but he, beyond that, he didn't know anything. Um, I try to call the other assemblies of God churches, but their numbers have been disconnected, so I don't know what's really going on there. Um, I'm going to continue to reach out to some people. Um, I just, just to kind of give you an app, uh, idea of what kind of was going on in the church at the time. Um, we had a uh, ministry uh, a speaker come in, and uh, he had a wife and a couple of kids. They were pretty young, but now they're you know far adults, you know, probably in their thirties, late thirties. But anyway, um, it was on the evils of rock music. Okay, now uh, I kind of have a mixed bag of feelings about those kinds of things. Now it was basically a uh, big talk about all these bands and stuff. And a lot of the, what he presented were half truths and some downright untrue stuff that was urban legends. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne never ate a human turd on stage. Okay. It was an urban legend, uh, that's been purported and written about in supposedly serious Christian literature. Now, Ozzy Osbourne basically is very anti, you know, according, you know, to what I understand about him is very kind of anti-Christian. Uh, he has delved in the occult. He's, uh, you know, been an alcoholic. He's been, you know, dr on drugs. There's a lot of ways to tell people that this probably is not the greatest person in the world besides making up lies about him. Okay. That, that, that's not going to accomplish your goals. But anyway, uh, you know, the very first night, now I do remember that this was around Christmas time sometime because the Pastor Steve mentioned, uh, you know, when he, well, I'm, let me tell you about what happened. Uh, generally, when these guys would come into church and talk, they would take up offerings. And you're talking about church where people have big money, all right? Well, they take up an offering, and this offering would be given to the speakers for, you know, their time to support their ministry, you know, to provide for their personal expenses, and I see nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but uh, the very first offering that they took for this guy, it was like a three or four day event. 
uh, they got like $60, you know? <laughs> and I mean, the congregation was just packed. And I remember Steve Poe getting up and saying, you know, okay, we took an offering the other night, you know, and we got a whopping 60 bucks out of you people. Church, we can do better than that. That was his exact words. And then the offering was like in the thousands, of, I mean, maybe even ten thousand dollars. I don't know, but it, it, you know, people you know emptied their. But you know, and I'm not not being judgmental here, but I just kind of want to give you an a idea of sort of the general, you know, going on at that church. Uh, people had money, and uh, there was a lot of pros. Now, from Pastor Steve's pulpit, I never really heard him jump on the prosperity theology thing. He may have, I don't know, but uh, I basically am to totally reject the prosperity theology. I don't. It's not that I don't think people should be wealthy or should work to achieve things, but uh, becoming a Christian so that you can bank, you know, on it. That that's like Benny Hinn, uh, you know, Jimmy Swagger, those guys. Uh, you know that that's not good. But anyway. Uh, to be honest with you, if you're watching this video uh, and uh, you happen to know some information about this church, I would greatly appreciate you contact me either by message or leave a comment or something because I'm kind of trying to find out what happened there, you know, there and everything. I think I feel in my spirit that there is more to the story, uh, but it's an old story because I, you know, I don't know exactly when that church ceased to be carrying first assembly of God. I do know that I think they did change their name to Riverside at one point, and now it's become a Baptist church. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the same congregation at all because you just don't go from, you know, I was, I started out in a Baptist church and I went to an assemblies of God church after that. You just don't start out as a uh, assembly of God church, you know, a spirit filled church and then go to the Baptist church, you know, theology. So really, if anyone has any information on this church, I would appreciate it if you would leave a comment or something or get a hold of me somehow and sort of tell me the story. Uh, it's just informational purposes. I'd, I'd really like to know what happened there.